So I've got two friends, Ian and Jasmine. They are currently engaged uh, to be married. They're not engaged in combat or something. Anyway, they dropped off Jasmine's PC the other day, which used to be Ian's PC, which used to be Ian's dad's PC, which Ian's dad built himself 10, 11, maybe even 12 years ago. According to Ian, his dad is a huge nerd and he actually watches the channel, which is awesome. And every time he builds a new system for himself, he goes all out and purchases top of the line hardware. So today I thought it'd be fun to take a little trip down memory lane to see what a super high-end gaming PC looked like over a decade ago. On top of that, I'm planning to upgrade all the internals with modern hardware so that Jasmine can do more with this PC. I'm keeping the case because the case is awesome, more on that in just a moment, but the internals obviously need updating if Jasmine wants to be able to game and do content creation like she's interested in doing. Her and Ian have talked about uh, playing Far Cry 5 together, as well as messing around with the Adobe suite, maybe doing some video editing and things like that as well. I think the first thing we should do is take a full tour of the system inside and out, starting with this case. The Ensemble One is our first fully custom desk mat that we've ever made. Our in-house design features an assortment of PC parts scattered across the mat to create an artistic surface for your mouse and keyboard. We also sourced a supplier who could print to our standards, resulting in vibrant color and finely printed lines that accentuate every detail. Measuring 90 by 40 centimeters, the mats are three millimeters thick and feature a microfiber surface, stitched edges, and a non-slip rubber backing. Also available is the Ensemble M, which takes a minimalist design approach to the Ensemble One with all the same quality features. Both styles are available in six different colors to match your desk setup. So if you like what you see and would also like to support the content we make, head to bitwit.tech and get your mat today. This is actually the first time I've ever seen this case. I think I just missed it. I think I got into PCs maybe a year or two after this thing came out. This is actually a Cooler Master chassis, and I'm sure some of you guys recognized it right off the bat. Cooler Master logo, and it looks like it was called the Wave Master. What, a, what an awesome name. I was actually talking to my dad, and he was like, he came in here the other day, and he was like, what, what is that? That should say Kodak on it. I was like, oh my God, it totally does look like a film roll. Like, I, I can't unsee it now. I will say, this is a really solid case. I mean, it's, it's kind of a tank. For being around 10 years old, this thing is in pretty pretty good condition. I think the quality just kind of speaks for itself. I don't see any dents or dings. I mean, obviously there's like little wear and tear scratches and marks uh, as you'd expect, but overall it's in pretty good standing, which is one of the reasons why uh, I think it's worth keeping around. Also just because it's super unique. However, I will say ventilation is not at strong point. You can see just the few ventilation holes right behind this kind of cosmetic plate that does absolutely nothing except block more airflow. I'm not planning to put super hot running components in here, so we should be okay. There are two 80 millimeter fans at the front and another one at the rear. We'll, we'll do some thermal testing when all is said and done as well, just to make sure that we're not overheating with this uh, revamped system. We have a nice squishy power button right here. Reset, which is recessed a little bit, so it doesn't uh, hit too easily. And then up top here, we have this Weird plate, I don't know, this plastic piece. That doesn't do much other than provide a unique look. This is a little door at the front panel that opens with a magnet. We have four, four and a, or four, five and a quarter inch bays. One of the, uh, the cover is missing and a handy dandy little SD card reader as well. USB 2, of course. Up top, we have our IO. You're probably wondering where the heck is the rest of the IO? It's up here. There's a little flap that you just depress and it pops up and you've got your audio jack, mic and headphone, firewire, USB 2.0 ports, and that's where you plug in your, your front IO. In case you're wondering, this I think is a mouse pad. I'm gonna take this off. I don't think that they need it or want it. This can't be a mouse pad. Why is it adhesive on the back? I don't know. It doesn't matter. The right side, nothing going on here, just a side panel. And then I believe this left one comes off. Well, they both come off, but this is the one that is hiding all of the precious hardware. And there it is. What is going on here? Okay, all right. So they did fill me in. Ian filled me in on some of the specs. We do have a Core i7 920 CPU. This is the generation right before Sandy Bridge. So first gen uh, core processor, I guess. I, I never had one of these. I actually got into the, the DIY PC craze right after this. So my first CPU that I ever used in a DIY PC was a 2600K. This was the generation right before that, I believe, on X58, the X58 chipset that still had the funky six dim setup. It looks like there's some mismatched RAM here. We have Corsair Vengeance, Corsair Vengeance RAM. I believe these are four gig sticks. I actually have these exact same sticks. These are the first sticks that I put in my personal system. Yeah, two by four, 1600 speed, DDR3, cast latency, 999, 24. Oh boy, my how times have changed. What is this? This looks like a uh, Kingston? Yeah. These look like four gig sticks as well. I'm not sure the cast latency, probably doesn't match the, the Vengeance sticks, but um, I did boot the system up earlier and it is registering all 16 gigs, so that's nice. We also have 
a Intel stock cooler. As you can see, that really hasn't changed over the years. Obviously, there are those uh, new all blackout ones that, uh, that come with select 10th gen CPUs, I believe. We have that 80 millimeter fan at the rear with that beautiful ketchup and mustard. And actually the power supply cables are a really nice flat black cable. At the bottom we can see it is a thermal take unit. Uh, not exactly sure what the wattage is or if it's 80 plus certified. We'll have to pop that out later and find out. By the way, this is an Asus motherboard. Asus motherboard on the X58 chippy. We also have these bad boys. Look at this, Crossfire X, baby. Holy moly, these are some MSI Twin Frozer 2 Radeon 6950s. Man, back when Crossfire was the shite. I think it goes without saying that multi-GPU configurations and support are not what they used to be, so now it's typically recommended that you go with a single fast GPU or the fastest one you can afford, realistically, as opposed to going with two of them and trying to Crossfire or SLI them, but uh, that is pretty badass. This was, this was for sure a badass system back in its day and, and for many years after that as well. We also have a hard drive, maybe one or two terabytes in there. And then we are booting off of an SSD. I'm wondering if this was an addition later. Uh, it very well could have been because SSDs were extremely expensive back then. I wouldn't be surprised if either Ian's dad or maybe even Ian added this down the line, maybe a year or two later when the prices came down a bit. This is a Patriot Blaze 120 gig. Uh, remember booting off of 120 gig SSDs? I remember I booted off of a 64 gig one uh, when I first built my system and then eventually got a second one and RAID zeroed it so I could have twice the capacity, but also twice the risk as well. Fortunately, nothing ever happened and now I'm digressing. Sorry, Jay. Uh, let's go on to the front here or if we could get a better look on the inside at the front panel, we also have two 80 millimeter fans at the front. Come on, focus. I believe in you. I know it's a hard spot. There you go. So two 80 millimeter fans right there and they are Cooler Master as well. So these were included with the case. I'm actually really curious what kind of temperatures this thing sees under load and also what the thermals will be like once we upgrade the system internally. Speaking of which I think we can probably reuse the power supply assuming that it has enough wattage for the new parts coming in and that it's not you know an absolute garbo unit and the storage as well I know Jasmine said she completely backed up all of her personal files and things that uh, that she wants uh, to keep so I could probably do a, a clean install of windows if that's okay with them we'll give this thing a good cleaning too because it's it's been a while probably since it's been cleaned out I'm actually kind of curious what kind of load temps this thing sees particularly the CPU and the top graphics card because it's just being squished by the bottom one I mean the, the PCB of the bottom card is resting right up against those those uh, top GPU fans. You know, it's probably for the best that Jasmine hasn't been gaming on this thing. I'm sure it was fine 10 years ago, but uh, I can't imagine this would be super sustainable for long-term gaming sessions now. But there she is, y'all. There's the system. Ain't she a beauty? Oh yeah. It's definitely a, a nice little time capsule of hardware. Uh, as much as I want to show you guys what hardware I'm going to be swapping out and upgrading in just a moment here, I first want to take this thing for a spin and see what she's made of. We got the system up and running, and I gotta say, it's actually not as loud as I thought it would be. I thought with the Intel stock cooler and these guys bumping uglies that it would just be uh, obnoxious, but it, it's not too bad. And we're not even idling. We actually have Far Cry 5 installed, or running, I should say. I did install the game just a moment ago because this is the game that uh, Jasmine and Ian are interested in playing together, so I thought it'd be a good test. You can see that our resolution's at 1920 by 1080, and I've set this to high. I don't wanna absolutely kill it by going ultra we're gonna we're gonna do high and see how that goes first i updated the drivers i don't even know what version it was on but i, I made sure that they were updated they're legacy drivers of course i didn't see a setting for for crossfire within the radeon settings you'll usually see an option for crossfire somewhere around here but it's not here i don't know if we just can't can't enable it or if it's already enabled i don't think it's enabled if i had to guess we're only using probably the top uh, 6950 there. But at this point, I doubt that having a second 6950 would really make much of a difference. And benchmark. Okay, look at that. Chop, chop, holy Toledo. We're scoring in the, the single digit FPS, my dudes and dudettes. Getting around seven hearty FPS there. Wow, look at that flip book of a disaster. Oh. Did it just stop? It literally just stopped. Yeah, no, we're, we're going, we're good again. It's uh, Everything's fine. This is running, running super smoothly. Yeah, this is definitely not playable. All right, the results are in, people. We got an average FPS of seven with a maximum of 12. 407 frames rendered, yikes. I guess the takeaway here is that even if you build a super high-end balls-to-the-wall gaming PC, it's still not gonna do you much good 10 years down the line. 
Technology is just advancing way too fast and that's why we're upgrading it today. But now we know we have a sort of a baseline of where we're coming from, seven FPS, that's the score to beat. I think we can do it, I'm feeling confident. Oh, you know what, let's take a look at temps. I wanna, I wanna take a look at temps. I had hardware info 64 open. Oh, our, our i7-920 is actually in not terrible shape. 60, around 61C, or I, I should say 65C on the hottest core. There's no package temp here, but Core Max is showing a maximum of 65C as well, so actually not too bad. Not too shabby. Let's see how the GPUs fared. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Oh no, 106C. Oh boy, oh boy. That is GPU zero. That's the top card. Oh my goodness gracious, that's a little warm. The bottom card got 73C, much more reasonable. That's definitely not an idle temp, so I wonder if Crossfire X was actually enabled or if this bottom card is just getting really hot because the top one's heating it up. At any rate, Temperatures are abysmal on the GPU front. Not too bad, not as bad as I thought they'd be on the CPU, but still, performance is in the shitter. I think we're ready to start swapping parts out. Let's go over here, and I'll tell you exactly what we're upgrading to today, starting with the motherboard. This is the MSI B450A Pro Max. This is on the AM4 platform, B450 chipset, of course. I mean, it does have a brownish PCB. Fortunately, there's no side panel window on, on this case, so it's not gonna matter too much what it looks like inside. I've actually never used this board personally, although it does look pretty pretty decent for an entry level option. It's got some pretty sizable VRM heat sinks on there. Four dim slots, that's good. None of that two slot business. And of course we get the scalable AM4 platform. Ian and Jasmine could upgrade this to, or they could upgrade the CPU to a Ryzen 5000 series Zen 3 chip down the line if they wanted to. Uh, they would just need a BIOS update to do that. ATX board as well. There's currently an ATX board inside of that chassis. And the CPU I'm dropping in is my Ryzen 5 2600X. Yes, I'm parting with this this beauty on the Zen Plus architecture. It's a six core, 12 thread CPU. So it's got two more cores and four more threads than the existing Core i7-920 that's in there. And uh, this is gonna be a nice little entry level chip or mi middle of the road chip for gaming as well as uh, some light content creation. We should see some pretty hefty gains all around from using this chip as the architecture is roughly 10 years newer than what's currently in there. We've also got an AMD Wraith Stealth cooler. Is this the Stealth? Yeah, I think it's a Stealth. I should do a fine job of cooling our six core CPU. I'm also going to be giving her some DDR4 memory. This is Corsair Vengeance uh, LED 3000 speed DDR4 cast latency 15. And these are 8 gig modules, so we're giving her 16 gigs. That's staying the same. And then the GPU. We obviously have to upgrade the graphics card, right? I'm going to be using this Power Color Radeon RX 5600 XT. A very nice card, actually. When I tested this, uh, I found that it was uh, technically a better value overall than the GTX 1660 Ti. I have nothing nothing but confidence that it's gonna blow away those Radeon 6950s. As far as the power supply goes, like I said, I'm not sure what the wattage is. I have a feeling it's gonna be enough considering it's, you know, if it's enough to drive these not very power efficient GPUs from back in the day, I have a feeling it's gonna be okay. But if not, if the wattage is too low, we can always swap it out. I've got plenty of spare units flying around, but those are the upgraded parts that we're putting in Jasmine's build. I think it's gonna be a quantum leap in performance in every possible area for her. So I'm pretty excited to get this all installed and then rerun that Far Cry 5 benchmark to to see exactly what kind of gains we're having with this upgrade. Let's get it done.
Smokey Smokey Dokey. The system's complete. Yeah, it's super squeak and clean as well. I cleaned the heck out of it. It looks almost as good as new. Of course, there's still, you know, like that normal wear and tear and stuff that you can't really get rid of. Overall, it's looking really clean. There is some ketchup and mustard. I couldn't really do much about this uh, rear 80 millimeter Cooler Master fan. Apart from clean it, it looks brand new. Uh, but uh, yeah, the ketchup and mustard is kind of killing it for me, although it kind of also matches the case, you know? So there's that. And then the RX 5600 XT almost gave me a heart attack because I thought it wasn't gonna fit. I thought it was gonna be too tall and that it was gonna stick out, especially with a connector on, on the front side here. But the side panel fits on perfectly fine. I feel like it just barely touches or barely grazes the uh, the plug here. If this GPU is any taller, we'd probably have to swap it out for a different card. So I'm glad that worked out. I did install a boot drive, a new boot drive for, for Jasmine. Um, this is my old M5 Pro from Plex Store, 256 gigs. So I just doubled the capacity of her, her old C drive, which is still here as a secondary SSD now. That's all wired up there. Got the hard drive back down here. It is a two terabyte drive. I mounted it or I relocated it to the bottom of the case so that the, the fans at the front have a little bit more uh, clearance. It was kind of in the middle before. I should also mention I couldn't find a way to actually remove these fans to give them a good cleaning. Obviously I took my data vac and stuck it right in to both of them and got a lot of dust out, but uh, I didn't actually get to clean them as well as this fan because there's just no way that I can tell to remove the front panel easily. Everything's riveted. You know, this is this is over a 10 year old case, so uh, it's not quite as deconstructible as the, the sort of towers that we're used to these days. Uh, I also took off the sticky, nasty residue, uh, the sticker residue on the power supply. Overall, it looks a lot better than what was there previously. Speaking of clean, how about that cable management? I did what I could, you know, I did the best I could in this case. It's kind of got an interesting like floating motherboard tray design, so there's not really actually like, uh, you know, grommets or cutouts. It's just kind of this whole empty space around the board itself, but it looks pretty clean. I can show you guys the back real quick. As you can see, I didn't really spend too much time doing cable management. This is all sort of loose. All of these Molex connectors, these are all Molex connectors, I know. A nightmare. Two of them are actually for the front fans, and then the others are supposed to be for these LEDs that uh, provide some some blue backlighting behind this cosmetic plate. But you can see that one's not lit up, and the other one that is is just so dim and old that you can't see it whatsoever. Uh, I also added a couple of these cable management ties. It's just stuck to the case with some adhesive, but it helps tidy things up because there are no tie down points behind here. Those definitely haven't been on cases forever, so I kind of had to make my own there. Oh, oh, one small thing that you guys may have noticed is that I actually swapped out all the original expansion slots uh, these aluminum ones for black ones that I actually pulled from a different case of mine. The reason being is that since we're replacing two GPUs with one GPU, we were actually missing two expansion covers, uh, which I doubt Ian and Jasmine still have. I mean, they might, but um, I just figured that just to be safe, I would populate all the slots with some black ones so it's all nice and filled out. Apart from that though, it uh, probably goes without saying that with a nice modern B450 chipset, we've got access to DDR4 memory, so that's a big step up from DDR3. And then we also have uh, support for things like NVMe SSDs. So a lot more modern connectivity and IO, which is always nice. Something that you wouldn't expect from this PC looking at it just from the outside. But enough jibber jabber. How does this thing actually perform? I'm glad you asked. Let's run Far Cry 5. Once again, we're at 1920 by 1080 and we are on high, right? Okay, make sure that VSync is off. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Look at how smooth that is. Hey, oh, well over 60 FPS here. Looks like we're getting all the way into the 80s, 70s and 80s. Holy guacamole. What a vast improvement. And our final average here is 79 FPS. Wow. Going from, was it 7 or 17? Doesn't matter. This is, this is way better. Good job, PC, and good job, me. I'm just so awesome. I'm going to rerun the test with the side panels on. We'll see what kind of temps we get. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, uh, you got, oh, that's the wrong thing. Uh, okay, got as hot as 61.5C on the 2600X. So our CPU staying pretty darn cool. What about the GPU? Let's see, we were at what? 106 degrees Celsius previously. And now, 70C. All right, so that's definitely better. Obviously, it'll get warmer than that during longer gaming sessions once the hardware is actually heat soaked, but so far, so good. It's looking a lot better all around. Uh, I wanted to, I didn't get around to doing this, but if I had extra time, I would have purchased one of those five and a quarter inch bay 
uh, units that has USB 3.0 ports on it. Because right now there's no USB 3 front panel here. Remember these are USB 2.0 ports, which is fine for dongles and peripherals and things like that. But it just doesn't feel right to have a PC in 2020 without front panel USB 3. So that's one thing that Ian and Jasmine can add or upgrade down the line. Or if they just wanted to make it easy, they could just get like a USB 3 hub, plug it into one of the USB 3 ports in the back on the motherboard. There's plenty of them. And then just, you know, kind of route that to whoever on the desk to make it easier to access. But that's it. That's the PC. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out, I think. I think Ian and Jasmine are gonna like it as well. It's gonna be a huge upgrade for, for Jasmine. So I'm excited to see what she does with it, whether it's games, content creation. I mean, the doors are really open for her in terms of what this system can do now. So that's pretty cool. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, toss a like before you head out, get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.